Hey guys, welcome to Learn Today RGCSC. This is a tutorial video for Physics, Paper 2, May June 2023, Variant 2-3. This video is going to be a little bit more casual than our usual videos of Paper 4 and 6. Question 1. The speed time graph shows the motion of an object. Remember that in a speed time graph, the gradient of the graph will represent its acceleration. How far does the object travel at constant speed? The object is traveling at a constant speed from 5 seconds to 15 seconds. When you are asked to calculate how far, which is the distance for a speed time graph, all you have to do is calculate the area beneath the graph. Since we're looking to find from 5 to 15 seconds, this will be the area that you're looking for. This is the shape of a square, so we will take the height of 5 multiplied by the base of 10, giving us 50. So the answer is B. Question 2. Which statement about a falling object accelerating close to the Earth's surface is correct? When an object is falling due to gravity, it will face two different forces. One is its weight, and since it's close to the Earth's surface, the other force is the air resistance. Since the mass of the object and the gravity doesn't change, the weight of the object as it falls will remain constant. So the answer could be either B or C. In B, it says that the weight of the object and the force of air resistance on the object are of equal magnitude. And in C, it says that the force of air resistance on the object is increasing. Remember that in the absence of air resistance, all objects will fall with the same gravitational acceleration. But since it is close to Earth's surface, there is air resistance, so the force of air resistance on the object will increase as the object falls. So the answer is C. Question 3. An aircraft is moving at 60 meters per second in a northerly direction. When a crosswind from the east starts to blow, the speed of the wind is 13 meters per second. What is the magnitude of the aircraft's velocity when the wind is blowing? So this is regarding resultant force. You have got the aircraft moving in north at 60 meters per second and a crosswind from the east at 13 meters per second. We want to look for the magnitude, which is the resultant force, and you can do that using Pythagoras' theorem. So it will be resultant force equal to the square root of 60 square plus 32 square, giving us a value of 61. So the answer here is C. Question 4. Two rectangular blocks consist of different materials. Four different methods are suggested to compare the two masses. Compare the accelerations with which they fall freely. Comparing acceleration will be more suitable to compare weight. Next, compare the values of their lengths, breadths, and heights. This would be to compare their volume, so no. Hang each in turn from the same spring and compare the extension. This method could work. And lastly, place one in the right-hand pan of a beam balance and the other in the left-hand pan. You could place your blocks here and see which one is slanted giving you the higher mass. So the answer is method 3 and 4C. Question 5. An object in a space probe above the Earth weighs 3.5 newtons. The gravitational field strength at the height of the space probe is 7 newtons per kilogram. The gravitational field strength on the Earth's surface is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. What are the mass and the weight of the object on the Earth's surface? The mass of the object will remain constant, so we could just use this formula where the weight is 3.5 and the gravity is 7 over here to get the mass, which is 0.5 kilograms. So the answer is either A or B. Now we will repeat the same method, but this time to find the weight, the mass remains the same, 0.5, but the gravity this time changes to 9.8 and the answer is 4.9. So the answer is B. Question 6. A cyclist is traveling in a straight line along a horizontal road at a constant speed. Constant speed means that the acceleration is zero and the resultant force is also zero. A constant driving force acts on the cyclist in the forward direction shown. Which statement about the magnitude of the frictional forces acting on the cyclist is correct? If the cyclist is moving in this direction, the frictional force will act on the opposite direction like this. Since the acceleration and the resultant force is zero, the driving force will be equal to the frictional force. So, for the frictional forces, the magnitude is equal to F. 
which is correct. So the answer is A. Question 7. A spring has an unstretched length of 3 cm. When a force of 60 newton is applied to the spring, its length stretches to 5 cm. The limit of proportionality is not exceeded. What is the spring constant of the spring? Okay, to answer this question, we can use the formula F equals to Kx, whereby F here is your force, 60 newton. K is the spring constant that we are looking for. K is the extension of the spring. And from here, we can see that the spring has extended an extra of 2 centimeters. So the value of K here would be 30. The answer is D. Question 8. The diagram shows the minimum force of F1 acting vertically on a lever required to lift a heavy lock of the weight W. The lock needs to be lifted by a smaller force than F1. The diagram shows the changes tracked. Each diagram has only one change from the original diagram. In each case, F2 is the minimum force required to lift the log. This question is regarding moment. To apply a lower force, we have to increase the distance from the pivot to the object. So increasing length of the lever to the right of the pivot will produce a smaller force. Applying the force perpendicular to the lever since we're looking perpendicular distance from the pivot in our formula, will also give us a smaller force than F1. And lastly, increasing the distance from the lock to the pivot will not produce a smaller force because we want to increase the distance of the force within the pivot, this one. So in which situations will F2 be smaller than F1? The answer is situation P and Q. So it's B. Question 9. A ball of mass 0.25 kg hits a wall at a speed of 16 meters per second. It then rebounds back, it then rebounds back along its original path at a speed of 12 meters per second. What is the impulse experienced by the ball during its impact with the wall? Impulse can be calculated and the change of momentum here can be determined by this formula. Mass of final velocity minus mass of initial velocity. Since the mass is the same, we can factorize the mass outside giving us a simplified formula like this. Okay, now let's substitute in the values. The mass is 0 0.25 and in brackets, the final velocity here is 12 meters per second. However, pay attention. This question is regarding momentum and we are using here the final velocity which is a vector quantity meaning that it has direction. Since initially it was moving in this direction, this can be positive direction. If it goes in the opposite direction, we will consider this the negative direction. So for your final velocity, you should be writing negative 12 over here, minus 16. And this will give you a value 7 newton seconds. Question 10. A bicycle braking system transfers energy from a kinetic energy store to an internal energy store. A motor converts energy from a chemical energy store in a battery to a kinetic energy store. What enables this energy transfers? In a braking system, you're going to need mechanical work and in a motor, it is an electrical work. So the answer is D. These are all theory questions, so you should read a little bit from your notes and book resources to remember all this information. Question 11. Research is being carried out to produce electrical energy from the fusion of hydrogen nuclide. Which row shows two of the problems in designing a fusion reactor? Now remember that a fusion reactor is when two hydrogen combines to form helium and this can only take place in the sun because it requires an extremely high temperature. So the temperature needed here is very high. And why obtaining a high density of hydrogen nuclei is difficult? The reason is because the nuclei are positively charged and since they are the same charges, they will repel each other. So the answer here is D. Question 12. The engine of a motor vehicle develops a large power. Which statement is correct? Power can be defined as the work done over time. If you want to gain a high power, you need to reduce the time. All your work done has to be high. So the engine must transfer a large amount of energy to increase your work for each second. So the answer here is C.
Question 13. The graph shows how the pressure due to a liquid varies with the depth beneath the liquid surface. The gravitational field strength is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Whenever you are asked to discuss about pressure due to liquid, remember its formula of H rho G. H standing for your height, rho is your density, and G is the gravitational field strength. What is the density of the liquid? Okay, you're looking to find the density. So we need our pressure. Let's say we take a pressure of 4000 equal to height. For the height, we will take the depth, which is 0 0.5. We're looking to find rho, and the g is already given 9.8. If we rearrange this, we will get a value of 820, so the answer is B. Question 14. What is the lowest possible temperature, absolute zero, and what happens to the energy particles at this temperature? The lowest possible temperature is negative 273 degrees Celsius or can be known as zero Kelvin. And the particle energy over here have the least kinetic energy because they are not moving. So the answer here is A. Question 15. Which statement about the particles of a substance after condensation is correct? Condensation is the process whereby gas converts into liquid. So after condensation meaning that we are looking to find information about liquid. The particles in the state of liquid are close to each other and they slide over each other. So the answer is E. If they are close to each other and vibrate, that would be solid. If they are far apart, that is gas. But gas do not vibrate about fixed points. If they are far apart and move freely, now both of these represents gas. Question 16. Two otherwise identical cars, one black and one white, are at the same initial temperature. The cars are left in bright sunshine and their temperatures increase. During the night, their temperature decrease. Which car shows the greater rate of temperature increase and which car shows the greater rate of temperature decrease? A black surface is known as a good heat absorber and emitter, whereas a white surface is known to be for a good heat reflector. So a greater rate of temperature increase, meaning that it has absorbed a lot of heat, that would be for a black surface. And a greater rate of temperature decrease would mean that it has emit a lot of heat which will also be a black surface as it is a good heat emitter. So the answer here is E. Question 17. A drop of water from tap falls onto the surface of some water of a constant depth. Which water spread out in the surface of the water? Which statement is correct? Okay, the lines that you see here are all the waveform formed from the peak of your amplitude. And this is known as a transverse wave. If the wavelength are the same, it tells you that the speed is also the same. So the statement about this view which is correct would be the waves are transverse and travel at the same speed in all directions. So your answer here is C. Question 18. Each point F is one focal length from the center of the lens. Each point 2F is two focal lengths from the center of the lens. Which diagram shows a converging lens being used as a magnifying glass? When the object is placed beyond 2F, this is used for camera. The object being placed in between 2F and F is for a projector. The object being placed at 2F and image is at infinity would be a telescope. And if your object is in front of F with your image being enlarged, that would be for a magnifying glass. So the answer is D. Question 19. A monochromatic ray of green light in air enters a block of glass. Which property of the light remains the same as it moves from air to glass? The speed of the light changes when it enters from air to glass. And the wavelength is being affected by this. The only property which remains constant would be your frequency. So the answer here is C. Question 20. A narrow beam of white light passes through a prism and is dispersed into a spectrum. Which row is correct? Okay, please make sure you remember the order of the colors. The right option would be red, followed by yellow, and then blue. So the answer is C. Question 21. A student writes four statements matching a communication system to the region of the electromagnetic spectrum that it uses to transmit signals. Which statement is correct? 
you have to remember the uses of each electromagnetic spectrum. So let's look at it one by one. For visible wavelengths, it says that you use wireless internet, so that is wrong. Mobile phones uses x-rays, but x-rays are used in medical imaging, so the answer here is wrong. Cable televisions uses infrared wavelength. So cable televisions are used in infrared wavelengths. The answer is C. Question 22. A ship sounds its horn when it is 790 meters from a cliff. A passenger on the ship hears the echo 4.8 seconds later. What is the speed of the sound? Echo means that when the ship horns in this direction, there is a sound that returns to the passenger 4.8 seconds later. You are required to find the speed of the sound. We can use the formula speed equals to distance over time. The distance of the ship from the cliff is 790 meters. But since we are looking to find the speed of the sound, we need to look at the distance of the sound traveled. It traveled forward and then it returned backward. This means that the distance traveled is 790 multiplied by 2. And the time taken here is 4.8 seconds. This will give us the value of 330 meters per second. Question 23. Which row gives the metal used to make the core of an electromagnet and one property of the electromagnet? Remember that electromagnets are made from temporary magnets and temporary magnets are iron. So the answer is B. Question 24. A plastic rod and a dry cloth are uncharged. Remember that uncharged mean that it has equal charges of positive and negative. The rod is now rubbed with the cloth and they both become charged. The rod becomes negatively charged because some charged particles move from the cloth to the rod. What is the charge on the cloth and which particles moved in the charging process? It already mentioned here that the charges move from the cloth to the rod. So this is the reaction. Only negative particles can move. This means that the negative particles from the cloth has now been transferred into the rod. So the cloth is now positively charged and there are more electrons than positive charges in the rod. So the rod is negatively charged. So the charge on the cloth is positive and the particles that move is electrons. Your answer here is C. Question 25. A student does an experiment to investigate the resistance of a metal wire. The graph shows the result from the experiment. As you can see here, it's high resistance at the beginning and as X increases, the resistance decreases. Now resistance can be determined by the length and area. When the length increases, the resistance increases. This is a directly proportional relationship. However, when the cross-sectional area of the wire increases, the resistance decreases. This is an inversely proportional relationship. And this graph is an inversely proportional relationship, meaning that as your cross-sectional area increases, the resistance is decreasing. So what should be plotted on the X is the cross-sectional area. And the cross-sectional area can be changed by the diameter of the wire. Answer is A. Question 26. The cost of an electrical energy is $0.25 for each unit of 1 kilowatt hour. A 2200 watt heater is switched on for 48 minutes. What is the cost of this use? Okay, we'll do this step by step. Step 1 is to convert your power of watts into kilowatts. Step 2 is to convert your time into hours so it is 0.8 hours. Step 3 is to find out how many kilowatt hours do you have. So that would be 2.2 kilowatts multiplied by 0.8 hour. So your answer is 1.76 kilowatt hour. And step 4 would be to multiply the cost for each unit of 1 kilowatt hour by the amount of kilowatt hour that you have. So the answer here is 0.44 which is E. Just remember to follow the steps as I mentioned and you will always be able to get the cost correctly. Question 27. The table describes four different resistance wires. They are all made from the same metal. Which wire has the smallest resistance? Again, the same type of question. As length increases, resistance increases. As cross-sectional area increases, resistance decreases. So to get a smallest resistance, you need the shortest length and the highest cross-sectional area. The shortest length will be 2 and the bigger the diameter, the higher the cross-sectional area. So the answer is B. 
Question 28. The circuit shown contains three switches and four lamps P, Q, R, S. Which switches must be closed to light only lamps P and R? To light up lamp P, we have to close the circuit of P, switch 1. And to light up R, we have to close the circuit of R. So the answer here would be only switch 1, which is A. Question 29. The diagram shows the magnetic field around a solenoid carrying an electric current. What happens to the strength of the magnetic field and the distance between the field lines when the current is increased? The strength of a magnetic field can be increased by increasing current or by increasing the number of turns around the solenoid. So when you increase your current, the strength increases and the distance between the field lines will become closer to each other indicating that the magnetic field strength is actually very strong. So the answer here is D. Question 30. The diagram shows a wire hanging freely between the poles of a magnet. There is a current in the wire in the direction shown. The magnet and current causes a force to act on the wire. In which direction does the force act? Using your left hand Fleming rule, Remember that your index finger represents the direction of the magnetic field which flows from north to south. Hence, your finger is pointing in this direction. Since your current is pointing in this direction 90 degree perpendicular, it should be like this. And this will show that your thumb is pointing into the page. So your answer here is A. Question 31. Which component forms part of a DC motor but not simple moving coil AC generator? The coil is present in both DC and AC. The brush is also present in both. The magnet is present in both. And the split ring commutator is only present in a DC motor, so the answer is D. Question 32. A transformer has 5,500 turns on the primary coil and 500 turns on the secondary coil. The output of the secondary coil is 100 voltage AC and is connected to a heater. The transformer is 100% efficient. 100% efficient means that the power in is equal to the power out. The heater produces a power of 132 watts. So 132 watts in giving you 132 watts out. What is the current in the primary coil? Okay, you are given with the number of turns, so you can use the voltage of primary over the voltage of secondary equals to the number of turns in primary over the number of turns in secondary. After substituting everything into your formula, you would get the primary voltage is 1210. Since we know the power in the primary is 132 watts, we can use the formula power equals to current times voltage. After substituting the values into our formula, we can find current by rearranging our formula and getting 0.11 amperes. Question 33. The scattering of alpha particles from a thin gold foil produces the following observations. Most of the alpha particles pass through the foil. This is because most of the atom is an empty space. Most of the alpha particles are virtually deflected. This is because the alpha particles is positively charged and so is the nucleus. Therefore, they will repel each other. So it tells us that the nucleus must be charged. A small fraction of the alpha particles are deflected through large angles. This proves us the existence of the nucleus in the middle of the atom and it carries most of the mass of the gold atom. And a very small fraction of the alpha particles bounce back from the core, the repeated point. In C, it says that the nucleus consists protons and neutrons, which is correct, but it isn't proven through this experiment. So your answer here is C. Question 34. A nuclide of chlorine has the symbol shown. What is the nucleon number of this nuclide? This is your nucleon number and this is your proton number. So the answer is C. Question 35. Which change is occurring in a nucleus during beta emission? This question has been repeated from all the variants 1, 2 and 3. Now, what happens to the nucleus when a beta particle is being emitted is that a neutron turns into a proton and an electron. So the answer is C. Make sure you know what happens in nucleus during alpha, beta, and gamma emission. Question 36. The graph shows how the count rate registered by a counter near to a sample of radioactive isotope changes over a period of few days. 
The background rate is 5 counts per minute. What is the half-life of this isotope? To find the half-life, you have to first remove your background radiation. And the background radiation here is 5 counts per minute. This started at 45. After removing your background, it will give you a value of 40. So 40 counts per minute becoming half is 20. So this is when it reaches one half-life. At 20, it has already passed 2.5 days. So the half-life here is 2.5 minus 0 0.5, which is 2 days. Question 37. Which row about orbits of the Earth and the Moon is correct? Now the Earth will take 365 days to orbit around the Sun, whereas the Moon takes 28 days or a month to move around the Earth. So the answer here is D. Question 38. Which statement about the orbits of comets is correct? This question has also been repeated in all the variants. Comets have elliptical orbits and the sun is not at the center of the orbit. So the answer here is B. Question 39. Which rule describes the power source for a stable star? This question was also being asked in all variants 1, 2 and 3. To power stars a stable star, you have to go through nuclear fusion whereby two hydrogen atoms will fuse into forming a helium atom at an extremely high temperature that can only take place in the sun. So a type of nuclear reaction is fusion and the fuel here is hydrogen. So the answer is C. Question 40. Which quantity can be determined using the brightness of a supernova in a distant galaxy? This has been explained in one of my video of chapter 6 that for a distant galaxy, it can be determined by using the brightness of a supernova in that galaxy. So when you use brightness of supernova, you are looking to find the distance of the galaxy. Your answer is B. Thank you for watching the video till the end. I wish you the very best and good luck for your upcoming paper 2 physics. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comment. Thank you. Bye-bye.